Something that has always fascinated me is the idea of prisoner's dilemma. In this video, I'll start with the introduction to prisoner's dilemma and later on I'll show you how we can simulate the iterated version of prisoner's dilemma using graphs and dots swirling inside a square. Let me start with the introduction to prisoner's dilemma first. Two prisoners are taken into custody for their alleged involvement in a heinous crime. They are kept in separate rooms and interrogated. The jailer meanwhile puts forward an interesting condition. If both of them confess to their crime, they get two years in prison. If one of them confesses but the other denies the crime, the one confessing gets to go loose. While the one who denies the crime gets a sentence of three years for lying to the authorities. If both of them deny the crime, they are just charged of minor arms possession and just given one year in jail. Now what would be the most rational thing to do in this particular scenario? I guess renaming the strategy of each prisoner can clear up any possible confusion that may creep up later. Let's say a prisoner confessing to their crime means that they are defecting with the other person and a prisoner denying their crime means that they are cooperating with the other person. Also perhaps replacing years in prison and punishment by equivalent reward points can help us visualize better. When both of them defect, let's say they both get 2 points as punishment for defection. When both cooperate, let's say they get 3 points as reward for cooperation. When one defects and the other cooperates, the one defecting gets 5 points and the one who cooperates gets 0 points for being a sucker. Initially, it feels like cooperating is the best option because when both of them cooperate, each gets 3 points reward of cooperation. They accumulate 6 points in total, serve a very few years in prison and live happily ever after. But let's pick through one prisoner's perspective. If the other prisoner defects, defecting is the best alternative for him. Because if he doesn't, he is going to be a sucker and earn no points. If the other person cooperates, defecting again is his best alternative. Because that way he will win maximum reward of 5 points. So seems like defecting is his best strategy. And it is the best strategy of the next prisoner as well, assuming that both of them are capable of reasoning. So even though through a group's perspective, cooperating seems to be the best strategy because it amazes the duo 6 points. But through an individual lens, defecting is the best strategy for both of them. It is called the dominant strategy or the equilibrium. If you would like to think of it more mathematically, here is something you could do. Let's say you are cooperating. You either get 0 points or you get 3 points. On average, you get 1.5 points for cooperating. And as you are defecting, you either get 5 points or you get 2 points. On average, it amounts to 3.5 points for defection. So through individual lenses, defecting seems to be the best option for each prisoner. That's what the dilemma is all about. While you'd want to maximize group rewards, you also have individual concerns. Isn't that beautiful? Today? We are into a more complex version of standard prisoner's dilemma called the iterated prisoner's dilemma. What would happen if the interaction between the prisoners didn't happen for just one time? What if the prisoners are repeatedly caught hundreds of times and have to go through the same dilemma? Let's talk about four strategies before we start all the fun. There are four prisoners with their own strategies. Always defect strategy represents a prisoner who always defects no matter what. Always cooperate strategy represents a prisoner who always cooperates no matter what. Tit for tat strategy represents a kind of prisoner who initially cooperates and then goes on copying the last move of the opponent. If the other prisoner always cooperates, he always cooperates as well. If the other prisoner starts to defect, he starts to defect from next move as well. Random strategy, as the name suggests, is a kind of prisoner who defects or cooperates randomly. Remember that you can find tens if not hundreds of strategies out there in the wild. Even you could come up with one strategy. But I thought that looking at these particular four strategies could be interesting. When all other strategies are pitted against random strategy, you'll watch how always defect strategy will dominate the always cooperate strategy which will earn the least points. Think why that might be the case. When we are fighting the random strategy, if you are always defect strategy, you either get 5 points or 2 points depending upon what the random strategy does. If you are always cooperate strategy, you either get 3 points or 0 points. Does that sound familiar? It, it's exactly similar to non-iterated version that I just talked about. 
this always defect strategy is better than always cooperate strategy in this particular case. Tit for tat and random strategies, pitted against random strategy, are both random, so they give us very less to predict, but at least they fare better than always cooperate strategy. What if all other strategies are pitted against always defect strategy? In that case, I guess you'll understand why tit for tat strategy will be indistinguishable from always defect strategy. Thus, red curve and yellow curve will overlap each other. Always cooperate strategy will on no single point, as it always will be a sucker. Random strategy, sometimes defecting, sometimes cooperating, will fall somewhere in the middle. Similarly, if you beat all other strategies individually against always cooperate strategy, tit for tat strategy will be indistinguishable from always cooperate strategy. So the blue curve and yellow curve overlap each other. Of course, always defect strategy takes the soul once again because it gains a lot of points by just defecting. Now, if you pit tit for tat strategy against all other strategies, you'd expect the tit for tat strategy pitted against itself to behave like a cooperative strategy and indistinguishable from always cooperative strategy. This time around, though, with defect strategy, tit for tat also acts as a defect strategy. And because reward points for cooperation are higher than punishment for defection, the always defect strategy loses the call this time. We saw how defect strategy can win in most of the cases, except when it is pitted against the tit for tat strategy. Don't you feel the odds to know what will happen if all the strategies are pitted against each other? I tried doing a simulation where I approximated interactions between the four strategies by random collisions of dots swirling randomly inside a square boundary. Note that all the possible collisions have been approximated to behave as if the collisions were all head on because we just care about interactions. So that is that. Here is the first simulation where all the strategies are in equal number. Now what could be the possible result of this particular simulation? Since we already saw the defect strategy when paired with tit for tat strategy in presence of a cooperative strategy loses a few reward points than it would normally do. Now tit for tat does what's always the seemingly best option, defecting with a defector and cooperating with a cooperator. But it doesn't get any temptation rewards that always defect strategy gets. Therefore, I root either for always defect strategy or tit for tat strategy to earn highest rewards in this particular case. And the results are exactly as expected. All his defect and tit for tat strategy do have the first two highest points. So now is all his defect the dominant strategy again? Concluding so hastily takes away all the fun. In truth, a strategy being a dominant strategy is entirely dependent upon the environment it's interacting with. Let me clarify what I'm saying by running another simulation, but this time the always cooperate strategy 
will be only 14% of the total strategies as opposed to 25% in the earlier case and raised strategies will be equally distributed. Now think what could result from this simulation. The always co-opted strategy is particularly low in this case which means that defect strategy loses a lot of temptation points that it could have gathered if it interacted with always co-opted strategy. I kind of expect it for that strategy to win the contest and become the dominant strategy this time around. Let's see how much right I am. The results are pretty much what we predicted them to be right. The third and perhaps the last for this video, here's a simulation with 40% of always co-opted strategy and the other strategies being 60% of the total strategies divided equally. In this simulation, since the co-opted strategy is particularly high in comparison to other strategies, expect always defect strategy to earn a lot of reward points and perhaps if everything works out well, always defect will be the dominant strategy this time. Again, it's our always defect that wins the war. So you might be wondering, that's a lot of variables to take into consideration then. What's the equilibrium strategy? Well, why did you think what might be the dominant strategy and post it in the comment box below? I just know that the equilibrium is completely dependent upon the environment in which it's interacting. That's it for today. Thank you so much for watching the video. Like, share and subscribe and help the channel grow.